Here at Newsbyte, we've got you covered with some of the biggest international stories. So if you haven't been keeping up to date with what's been going on in Zimbabwe, here's what happened. Robert Mugabe's stretch of power began in 1980. He was hailed as a freedom fighter for his role in leading the Zimbabwe African National Union against the white minority government. The conflict concluded with the Lancaster House Agreement, which granted the country independence if they held their elections. In 1980, Mugabe and his party won a landslide victory, earning from the position of Prime Minister and in 1988, President. Although his rule began with much optimism, Mugabe quickly became a controversial figure. He sought to maintain power through aggression and violence. A key issue for Mugabe's government was land reform. In 2000, the state permitted white-owned land to be violently seized without compensations. This, on top of regular droughts, a sharp decline in external finance and international sanctions, led to food shortages and mass economic hardship. Yet Mugabe continued to remain in power with consistent accusations of election rigging. He appeared an undefeatable figure. However, successful opposition finally came from within his own party. As the oldest world leader at 93, the question of who would replace him was a vital issue. It was expected that Emerson Mangwara, Mugabe's right-hand man and vice president since 2014, would be the natural successor. This was until early November when Mugabe fired Mangwara for apparent disloyalty. This led many people within the party to believe that Mugabe was positioning his controversial and unpopular wife, Grace Mugabe, to be the next president. On the 15th of November, the military seized the state broadcaster, announcing they had Mugabe under house arrest. The army's chief of staff, General Moyo, was broadcast stating, we are only targeting criminals around him. Demonstrating their resistance to Grace Mugabe and supporting Mangwara, over the following days, huge protests formed in Harare, the nation's capital calling for the president to step down. The ZANU party met and voted to remove him from office, allowing him a day to resign or else face an impeachment. However, in a live and lengthy address in which Mugabe was expected to resign, he stated that he would consider to preside over Congress. This then sparked the impeachment process until Mugabe finally resigned in a written statement, stepping down as head of state after 37 years in power. So what does this mean for the future of Zimbabwe? Emerson Mangwara now occupies the role of Zimbabwe's president. Nicknamed the Crocodile because of his perceived ruthlessness and political cunning, he has for decades been a part of Zimbabwe's ruling elite. While there is much jubilation that Mugabe is no longer in power, there is no guarantee that the status quo of corruption will now change. In his inauguration speech, Mangwara promised to be a president of all the citizens, regardless of colour, creed, religion, tribe, totem or political affiliation. While there is no certainty this will be true, for many Zimbabweans, Mugabe's resignation is the turning point for a new democracy, new politics and new hope for the country. <laughs>